What's up guys, how's it going? Thank you for stopping on my channel, The Transporter. It has been a long time coming since I made a video and um, what a perfect opportunity to, um, to show you guys what has occurred. First and foremost, I wanted to say thank you to every single subscriber that has pressed that subscribe button. It seems like uh, there's a lot of people that are interested in, in what I do. It's, it's been a challenging thing, um, but it, it has been definitely rewarding because um, not only financially, but uh, the knowledge that I'm picking up through this experience, um, which I hope to teach every single one of you all my mistakes and everything that has gone right for me as of right now it's been about a year and a half since I started this business and um, right now I wanted to talk to you guys about the first year of of um, of my business what happened in the first 12 months I wanted to show you guys a little incident that occurred and this goes to show that anything can happen with when you're driving um, a commercial vehicle in terms of it breaking down or in terms of it um, not starting or etc etc Let, let's have a look and see what what I'm talking about so in my inspection this morning which uh, you're supposed to inspect your vehicle daily so that's gonna be a topic for another day but um, I just noticed this right now um, I noticed that my tire over here has lost a chunk of its tread look at that and then we got uh, some wires are already ripping apart so obviously this is a safety issue this is a safety hazard I cannot continue um, I cannot continue my day uh, driving like that it's just it's it's stupid it would be dumb for me to continue I think um, inside here sounds a little bit better outside is a little too windy so it's obviously a safety issue and um, if uh, if the authorities were to see that they would definitely pull me over and perhaps give me a good ticket um, because uh, that tire looks like if I get into the highway, into high speeds, it might explode, it might do something crazy, I don't know. But I'm not going to take that risk. Okay, so that goes to show that anything can happen throughout, throughout the day with, with your truck, with your deliveries. Okay, so, um, and that, that adds a little bit of stress to your day. If you are going to start your own business, you have to expect some sort of stress. Some days you're going to want to drop everything and just quit. But that is where the, the winners are separated from the losers. You have to continue. You have to know what you're getting into. It's a huge risk. It's a huge risk. It's a huge expense. I wanted to show you guys what the numbers are for the first 12 months and uh, let me tell you it um, it isn't cheap it's not it's not cheap to run a rig uh, to run a tractor trailer there's there's quite a bit of expenses involved and let's have a look right now uh, 2016 was the very first year I started my business Okay, so uh, the last days of 2015 was when I quit my job uh, driving for another company uh, with their truck. And then I decided uh, enough was enough. I'm going to get my own truck, get my own client and um, run a rig uh, directly, uh, contracted directly with a client. Okay, uh, how I got this client is going to be another episode. Uh, for now, let's have a look at 2016. So as you can see, 
this list is ordered by date. Uh, we start off in January and we end in December. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you guys what all of this is, how it is that I uh, arrange all of my expenses uh, for, especially for my taxes. Um, my, uh, my tax uh, person, uh, the person who does my taxes, uh, it becomes an easier job for him to, um, to I guess, to file my taxes. Uh, once he sees all of this arranged and I don't have to send him papers and none of that. So what I do is I just send him this um, this Excel file and everything is already added up for him. Uh, it, it certainly does the job easier and um, I guess it limits uh, uh, the amount of mistakes that could happen. Okay, so the very first thing I got was my CVOR application. I've already explained what this is. Uh, I, I did the test twice. I failed the first time and um, I had to write my test twice. Okay, so uh, these first things over here are under uh, business expenses. Okay, so what I do is I, I add up a formula in the formula bar by pressing equals and then adding up all of the um, all of the boxes that belong to the descriptions so as you can see b10 over here is booster cables i bought a pair of a set of booster cables uh, gauge one i believe they were really thick cables in case i ever uh, needed a boost but up until this point uh, i haven't had the need to use them uh, b18 was uh, CVR decals. These decals uh, by law in this province of Ontario and I'm sure that in many or in all states they have to have and what it is it's it's a description of what your business name is and your uh, operator's registration number on your that have to go on your door okay so they have to be big enough uh, so that once you get pulled into the scales that uh, the officers can see your number and pull up your information quickly. That way uh, they can decide whether to pull you in for an inspection or um, for whatever reason they needed on your doors to be visible. Okay, So these were important. I did not know this uh, and eventually I got pulled in and... Uh, the officer gave me a warning for this one so the very next day I went ahead and got these uh, decals on both of my doors on my tractor and that's what this cost $84 okay so uh, continuing with business expenses uh, bill of lading maker what this is uh, it's um it's a bill of lading maker. It's software that I purchased for the computers uh, for the company that uh, I, w I, w I will be, um, I started delivering for. Okay, so what, what it is is uh, it just facilitates. Um, it's like a contract. A bill of lading is a contract, basically. Okay, so it states the, um, uh, the shipper name and the receiver name and the product that you are actually delivering. And that is what they sign. So it's it's something very basic uh, that you, you must have um, if you are starting uh, a, you know your own business. Uh, the the tractor or sorry the um, the transport company must have a bill of lading, whether it be on uh, online or if you're going to provide these uh, w by written paper, by carbon paper. Because you got to make four or five copies of each of um, each of these, so um, this is something very important that companies are going to ask for. Okay, so uh, continuing on uh, the inspection books. Okay, uh, when you write up your inspection every morning, you must write it in an inspection book. Uh, I show it once here, and I don't think I ever show it again. And that is because what I do is I collect points with um, the place that I fill up my diesel at. And I use those points to buy these inspection books. 
Okay, so when you get pulled into the scales or when you get pulled over by a police officer, you must have an, a filled out inspection book that is signed by you. Uh, just basically stating that that you have inspected the truck and that you are liable for anything, okay? So that is something very important. Business cards, I, I made um, business cards and Vistaprint. Um, maybe I should show an image uh, somewhere here. Uh, maybe I'll put it right there just to so you guys can see what my business card looks like. Um, what else? Uh, toolbox. Um, this is a toolbox that I bought uh, to keep just an, uh, you know, an amount of tools that I may need on the road if I ever break down. Okay, so it's it's basically just to hold tools and to hold replacement parts if you ever need them. I see a lot of guys putting them behind the cab on the outside and then they just bolt them onto the uh, chassis I guess onto the chassis bed uh, I see a lot of guys just keeping them inside what so far what I've done is I've just kept it inside my cab and I haven't done I've been wanting to um, put it out in the back just to have a little bit more room inside my cab but that's what I'll do in the future uh, so the plate sticker uh, the license plate sticker it costs uh, almost a thousand dollars and this is on the more affordable side uh, because my truck is a medium duty tra uh, tractor the heavier duty tractors here in Ontario pay upwards fifteen hundred two thousand dollars right for heavier trucks okay so that's a big expense um, tools vice grips I did a little bit of advertising um, uh, here's a pair of gloves, inspection books. Okay, so the bank fees for my um, for my business account came up to ninety five dollars for the year. Name decals. Not sure. I can't remember what this is. I would have to look it up. If I have an answer for you, I'll put it right there. Okay, so here's another logbook. Here is the loan interest for the year. Okay, this is what I paid for the loan, uh, the interest on the loan that I uh, that I made through the bank to buy my tractor and my trailer. That is a significant amount. Obviously, it's over twenty five hundred dollars. And like I said before, if you are starting a truck tr um, uh, a trucking business. Obviously, the more you have saved up, the less you have to borrow and uh, the less you have to give your profits to the bank. Okay, so saving up is essential. Uh, zero down is is obviously, you know, you're going to pay the price, right? And that's what I've done. I've done a zero down. I didn't have anything saved up. And you can see right there, 2500 plus to the bank of profits okay so insurance payments is um is is uh fairly simple it's a monthly charge of um let's see 698 698 and i believe the whole year is 698 6 69888 okay so the total amount for insurance is 69.88 Canadian uh, for my medium duty tractor and this includes the cargo insurance up to a quarter million dollars okay so if you don't have cargo insurance obviously this will be cheaper uh, I think I believe cargo insurance is around twenty five hundred dollars and then the rest was the um, the insurance for the tractor to be on the road okay your your full your 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 full coverage like theft comprehensive and all that stuff okay so cargo insurance takes about a third of this i believe it was okay so rig depreciation i calculated um to be about 15 percent of the cost okay so 
F3, which is the total cost, is 15% of the total cost. And I did it this way because here in Canada, the depreciation amount that you can write off for your business is 15% for the first year and then up to 30% for the second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year, and so on. So second, third, fourth, and so on, you can depreciate 30% each year. Okay, so um, for example, so 48, almost 49,000. Here, let's do a calculation right here so you can see. So 48,927 minus 7339 next year I will have up to 30 percent of 41,000 to depreciate off my taxes you don't have to do the 30 percent you could do 20 percent you can do 25 percent um, but I'll probably do 20 percent for the following year just so I can um, I cannot th that way I can save um, on uh, future years and I don't have to burn up all of my uh, uh, depreciation okay so that is up to you what you want to do but here in Canada the first year the maximum is 15 percent in the United States uh, you would have to look up what your state does or what your federal um, the CRA allows you to do um, it could be a different rule if you're in different parts of the world, in the UK or in anywhere in Europe, they, they, they probably do different rates, obviously. Uh, they're different governments, so that you would have to look up. Okay, so that's what the rig, uh, rig depreciation is here. Uh, the maintenance, if you look at my maintenance for the year, year here, it's very low, okay? Um, that is because I just got this truck and not much has happened in the first year um, in terms of breakdowns, okay? But I will warn you, the next year, yes, there, there were a lot of expenses, okay? So keep in mind that I also started running my truck from mid-March up until the, the end of the year. So about three quarters of the year, I ran the truck as well okay uh, the fuel as well uh, you see it that it's very low in future years is all it's a little bit higher okay so don't let these two fool you uh, because I've only ran the truck three quarters of the year for this first year my first day of deliveries was mid mid March March 19th and I did not run uh, very much if I remember correctly I did however run run this truck five days a week every week okay so that that was the huge thing that was the huge advantage that i had with uh, getting this um this contract with this company they have work for every week uh every day uh, monday to friday and you can see here even some saturdays every now and then saturdays but the very first work day was on a saturday march 19th okay so Guys, that that was uh, the expenses of um, of uh, my business. Uh, you can tally up what all of this equals to, okay? Um, and then, uh, more or less, if you are going to run um, a heavy-duty truck, you can add 25% to this, uh, 30%, 35%, okay? Because my truck... Don't forget, it is a medium-duty tra tractor trailer. Uh, it's only a 36-foot trailer, a 310 horsepower um, engine on my tractor. Okay, so single axle. It's a medium-duty tractor. Okay, so don't, don't let these numbers fool you guys. It could be a lot more expensive uh, to run a heavy-duty tractor. Okay, so add 30%, add 35% you know, to, to get the full effect, to get the full, um, to estimate fully what a running of a, a heavy duty tractor would cost you guys. 
thank you guys for uh, joining me once again on my channel and um, I hope you you guys are liking this uh, channel and I hope to bring you guys more informative videos such as this one okay uh, join me next time and I will see you guys again take care